acute versus chronic uniform uh, sorry uniform distribution of tracer in both the kidneys is normal you, you can see the difference between the previous dtpa images there you will see cortical uh, the cortical uptake and the pelvic ulcer system drainage here the tracer is fixed in the cortex so this is dmsa which is used for cortical so there is any defect in the periphery this is a scar scar or pyelonephritic focus how do you differentiate in a normal volume kidney if there is a defect on one scan you cannot say whether it's a scar or a pylon acute pyelonephritic focus if there is a subsequent scan which is done after three months after antibiotic therapy if it disappears then it is acute focus if it persists then it's going to progress to a scar so then and then if you, if you see such a kidney, that means small kidney with irregular contours and less subtake, this is loss of volume and irregular contour, this is characteristic of chronic pyelonephritic kidney. And not only for these, a congenital anomalies also can be very well evaluated. You can see the fusion of the cortex. This is cross fused ectopia, the one which uh, Dr. Baru was showing in the morning on a CT urography. This is a very, not if you compare the cost of the investigation also, very cost effective investigations, almost half the price of the other. And this is a horseshoe kidney, you can see the both mitis. So it can be used for congenital anomalies and it has a definite role in the evaluation of uh, children with UTI, the role of DMSA scans. The, in the diagnostic algorithm, you will find the DMSA scan. This is a proposed algorithm by the Pediatric Association. So this is one interesting case, a tall man, a foreigner, uh, he just came in search of meat and nuclear medicine department, where is Dr. Kavita, where is Dr. Kavita and then after he saw me, he said, I came in search of my kidney, which was not found on protein ultrasound. Then, then uh, I took the ultrasound report and they said uh, nothing in the, they couldn't find in the pelvis or either in the renal fossa. Then we injected DMSA. He's a tall person and this is a normal, normal kidney. And here you see the kidney almost. Uh, you can see slightly the liver on the left side. It's almost up to the thorax. So I thought it could be a thoracic kidney. This is, you can see here, you can see the difference. And this is a bladder. He's a tall individual also. But we did a CT scan. And this is a... So you can see the sleeve of diaphragm there. This is a hernia. Diaphragmatic hernia, the kidney. So herniating through it. So this is not a thoracic kidney and this is a hernia with a renal herniation. Coming to radiation hazard, so for, a, uh, for an abdomen uh, radiograph, uh, it is uh, uh, for, a single, for a single abdominal radiograph, it is 0.73 MSV and uh, for as for in a DTP arenograph, you will see the kidney and the bladder almost less than 10 times less radiation with the um, DDP arenogram. Of course, in the DMSA, because there will be a lot of cortical uh, retention, you will have more uh, radiation compared to this DTPA. But if, the, if you encourage good hydration, and then uh, we will aim at good radiation protection. So to sum up, renal scintigraphy always stays ahead for the confirmation of obstruction and thereby plan the management and most important thing is uh, to evaluate the status of the opposite kidney when they are contemplating for nephrectomy and all and uh, in the post of follow-up of many of these corrected congenital anomalies of course the GFR estimation it's one of the only investigation um, in voluntary kidney donors uh, nowadays this is one important parameters which uh, the organ transplant unit require so Thank you.